Evening everybody, welcome to the recap video for day four of NFL free agency. Uh, it was the first full day of actual factual free agency. And once again, things went maybe a little bit slower than we thought, but by the end of the day, the Seahawks had made a couple of moves. They had also, per thanks to John Schneider's uh, radio interview, come out and said some things about what they're planning to do from here on out. So, what did we learn today about the Seattle Seahawks? What did they do? Did they make anything better? Yeah, they did. Uh, we actually have a center on the roster, a real center, an actual factual center. And it's one that I wasn't really talking about that much personally. It wasn't somebody who was on my radar in a big way, but it seems like we have done extremely well and we have gotten our hands on an extremely undervalued one get based on the fact that we gave him a one year deal. So, um, Evan Brown was the first move of the day, guard slash center from uh, Detroit, the Detroit Lions. He played center in 2021, and in 2022, he played right guard. He was better at center, though. Schneider has confirmed that he's going to be a center here. We view him as one, but he has some versatility, which is nice. He played a nice season in 2021 for the Lions at center. Uh, at guard, he occasionally got physically overwhelmed, which was something that um, which was uh, something that hopefully he won't have to deal with here. I think it's a really nice signing. It's a one-year deal, so it might just be a bridge or a hedge for a rookie center. Basically, we don't have to take a rookie center now, but if we do, it's pretty easy for Evan Brown to either just start for a year ahead of the rookie or maybe compete with the rookie for a starting job. So... That is great news. We have ourselves a center, and it's somebody who is starting caliber. He started the last couple years. He started 24 games at center and right guard across two seasons for the uh, Detroit Lions. So Evan Brown is here, and I think that most Seahawks fans are pretty on board with it. We don't know the money yet, though. We know it's a one-year deal. We know it's a one-year deal, which... Given the fact that Spotrack estimated this guy was going to get like three years, ten, uh, uh, 30 million, 32 million actually, I think, that means we did quite well here. And I think that it, it allows us to be flexible in the draft. And that's the main benefit here. So good signing. I like it. I got to do more research into it. I got to look into it a little bit more. But it seems good to me. All right, so that takes us to move number two, which just happened like a couple hours ago. Drew Locke. Drew Locke is back in Seattle. This one surprised me. I thought he was gone for sure after we brought Geno back. I thought we were going to bring back either one or the other, not both. But the market never really developed for Drew Locke, and he's back for a contract that is probably going to end up being one year, $4 million. So that's kind of an interesting move, just trying to, you know, understand what's going on here. Obviously, Geno Smith's contract means he's probably going to be here for a, another two years. So drafting a quarterback, especially with a high-value pick, is unlikely to be on the menu, even though I think it was still a possibility before today. Now that it's now it's really not. So bringing back Drew Locke just as a backup who can take over if Geno gets hurt or is really not playing well, that makes some more sense, but I still thought he was going to go somewhere where he had a chance to actually just straight up start, like Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa Bay signed Mayfield, uh, the Va Raiders signed uh, Garoppolo, so it became harder and harder for him to find that place. But I thought for sure he was going to go somewhere where he could at least compete for the starting job, but maybe that pay place just really did not manifest. So Drew Locke is back in Seattle on what is likely to be a one-year $4 million deal. I think that's a good deal for him. You look at what other backup quarterbacks are going for, other experienced veteran backup quarterbacks are going for, guys like uh, um, uh, Sam Darnold, guys like Andy Dalton, guys like, um, God, what's another good example? Baker Mayfield. I know he's going to start there, but we all know that um, Baker Mayfield is basically a backup quarterback. Um, it it kind of makes a lot of sense to me that you would go for one year, four million on Drew Locke. So... Pretty good activity today. Um, we helped fill out the roster. I think things are starting to make a lot more sense. There are basically three remaining positions of concern for the Seahawks at the moment in terms of like we kind of need to do something now. Um, they are running back, defensive line, 
and linebacker. Uh, running back, we currently have two running backs on the roster, and one of them is DJ Dallas, who people have mixed feelings on in general. Um, there is, um, of course, K-9. And then defensive line, I know we've added some guys on the defensive line, but I'm still looking at it. There, we still have a depth problem right now. Our number th three and number four defensive ends are Miles Adams and Gerard Hewitt. So, I... I feel like we got to do a lot better there, and I feel like part of that is a free agent signing. And linebacker, we still haven't signed anybody. Right now, our linebackers are John Radigan and probably Nick Ballore. <laughs> so I think we still need help in these areas, and I don't think the draft is going to be able to do 100% of it. You want to maintain flexibility. So, John Schneider did actually do an interview on the radio earlier today, not too long ago, actually, as of this recording, just a couple hours ago, and he did talk about the fact that there are a lot of linebackers available in free agency, so he did not feel the need to sign um, anybody who was in a bidding war, because that drives the price up, of course. He wanted to wait and see who was left after everyone had exhausted all of their money. So that makes sense to me. I, I, I don't have any issue with that. I have no objection with the idea of hanging back and waiting for the right linebacker. So I like that. There are still plenty of linebackers in left in free agency that I think would be good. Um, we may need to sign more than one, but we can still do that. And kind of like with Evan Brown, if you wait, there are going to be guys out there who you can get for a much cheaper cost. Uh, he also said that the Seahawks are still looking at signing defensive linemen, and it has been said, this was actually said yesterday, that the Seahawks were very close to getting Zach Allen and Draymond Jones. They just couldn't make the financials work with uh, Zach Allen. So clearly there is an understanding that we need to get much better on the defensive line, and we're going to have to do at least some of that through free agency. So I expect us to be in on one of these nose tackles who's left, maybe a guy like Akeem Hicks, but at this point, it seems like we're kind of waiting for the cost to go down, which is completely reasonable. I get it. I got no objection with that. Um, there were some things that hurt a little bit today. Like, it hurt to see Donta Foreman go to the Bears for $3 million. I would have loved to have gotten Donta Foreman for $3 million. Andrew Billings went to the Bears for $3.5 million. I would have been all over that. He's a starting caliber, decent nose tackle. Yes, these things do punch you a little bit but overall there are still a ton of players left in free agency who I would love to get so that's basically what happened in day four of free agency for the Seahawks we didn't lose anybody <clears throat> actually none of our outgoing free agents have signed today um Drew Locke one year four million and Evan Brown guard slash center has signed for one year unknown amount I'd call that a pretty good day we are starting to run low on money. I talked about the uh, salary cap situation this morning, but there are still things we can do to create more. We have not restructured Lockett yet. We have not done any void year voodoo yet, to our knowledge. Um, it's still very possible. All right. I'll see you guys later tonight. I'll see you guys on Twitch. I will be streaming tonight. Probably it takes two. I'll see you guys for the uh, B&B show over on the Hawk's Nest. So thank you for coming out today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this video uploaded, and that's your day four recap. Pretty good stuff. Need to see more. We got one day left of the uh, marathon streams.